The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thanks so much for tuning in to start your trading day. We got markets off to the races with a hot jobs number. Wages running hot as well. Unemployment, 3.4%. Remarkable resilience in the jobs market. And we kick things off. Market came into this number almost right where we are right now. Let's back it up to a one-minute chart just so you can see a little bit of the volatility. Coming into that 830 number, there you are at about 4105. Within about a point of that number, you trade down to 4096. You trade up what, 15, 16 points in the S&Ps, and we are positive by 8 tenths percent right now in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, positive by 6 tenths. We got Apple with decent earnings last night. Why not jump over to Apple since it's going to be impacting everything this morning? $170. Apple was trading at about 169 coming into that jobs number. You're up by what, five bucks, three, three and a half percent. That was about the expected move. I think it was, let's jump over. What was it? About $4.88. Check it out. So Apple up about $5 right now. $4.30 right now, so pretty much within the expected move, $170. That's going to put a lift in everything. Interesting, though, right? Apple up that degree, and meanwhile, the NASDAQ lagging, okay? But we got some moves going on in the dollar. We got some moves going on in yields. We got some moves going on in banks. The banks got decimated yesterday. They're catching a little bit of a bid today. Uh, there you go. I mean, Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving, right? That's what I like to say because it's true. Yes, we are going to be up, what, 30% on PacWest this morning? But, folks, you just back it up to a week ago when you were at $11 and you're still trading at $4. So be careful, man, on that one. We jump over to crude. Catching quite a bid from the lows earlier yesterday. We're above $70 and $70.61. We got dollar strength. We got gold weakness. Gold off 37 at 2018. Remarkable, man. Got to jump over to the dollar index when you see a move like that. Dollar catching a bid to 101.66. We jump over to notes and bonds. The 10-year down 25 ticks right now. You're talking about a 10-year yield, 3.45%. The yield on the 10-year right now. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index spikes to 21.33 yesterday. We're at 18.47 right now. And on the S&Ps, if you're looking for areas to get short, which I may be, uh, 4116, about the 382, 4150 would be a nice one, man. That would be a 618 of the entire move lower this week. That also is the area that you chopped around uh, for the better part of Tuesday evening into Wednesday, kind of the area you chopped around most of Wednesday as well. The 618, about 4150, nice round number, as our man Basil Chapman would say. All right, and what are we going to kick it off with? We got a call. We got our man Tom from Tampa. Tom, good morning. Happy Friday, man. How's it going? Hey, TGIF, brother. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for calling. How's everything going? Good, man. They're smacking gold around good this morning, aren't they? Oof, 37 bucks, man. Uh, it was Whoa. quite a number, you know, 3.4% unemployment. And the, the number that I found most interesting, wages matter, and there's a couple ways to look at them. But that was a hot wage number, man, 0.5% month over month. Multiply that times right. 12. That's still 6%. People are getting raises, man, just in the last, uh, last month. So, it's an interesting wow. number, man, and we got 21 minutes in, until the open. I imagine it's going to be an interesting, volatile day, for sure, both directions. It's going to be a wild one, yeah. Right? Hey, Tommy, can you take a look at uh, Verizon VC? Has it got support here? Boy, this one's a tough one, man. Um, you talk about a pullback, right? And right. so my, my mom worked for Verizon for a long time, retired from Verizon, so I always take a look at it. And longer term, man, this thing – really broke out of a channel line at like the end of 2021. I have it up here on Tiger TV if you see it. It's dicey territory, man. I'm not really sure because when I look at this thing longer term, I mean, yeah, you're back at the lows. This is a strong company. Um, they got a good dividend, you know, and you've pulled back from what, 60 bucks. But boy, it's scary territory, Tom, because when I put it on a monthly, right, and you can put these channel right. lines um, in a little bit different spot where exactly they line up. 
but it's pretty close to a well-defined channel line on a monthly, man, and you traded well out of there, and maybe you're going back to test the lows that we had all the way back in 2010, which would be like 26 bucks, because Ooh, that's kind of yeah. an area that you were accelerating higher out of there. You know, I mean, that's the recent low. I don't, you're kind of in no man's land on a longer term basis. You know, when I was looking at this chart and it was falling out of bed, man, that's kind of what I was thinking about. And to see it sitting near the lows right now, right? When the market's right. caught in a bid, even this year, you've backed off from 42.50 to 37.50. They have some issues going on, I think, man. So I'd be careful of this one. I would. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Yeah. All right. I know. Dicey territory. Verizon, man, seems like they're going to be around forever. But boy, what's up with the drop off even from 60, 60 dollars plus, you know, to 37? That is quite a drop off for a company that's supposed to be a relatively stable dividend play, yeah. you know, yeah, on, on most accords. Right, right. For it's sure, like, man. Your dad so, one day said, hey, you know, these phone companies aren't going anywhere. Yeah, you know, I mean, they're going to be around. Um, yeah. And, and you know, if you want to get into it, maybe you could scale into it or something. You know, if you have a position size, you're going to put into it. Maybe you get some in now. I mean, we get the market sitting at pretty high levels right now, above 4,100. And this thing's just gotten decimated over and over. So if the market really pulls back, nothing crazy. But, you know, you get a 10 percent pullback in the market, 15 I don't know. Right. It's a tough one, man, on the, yeah. on this equity. Yes, yeah, it is. On, I'm going to sit on my hands for now. Like, just yeah, it's a tough that. one, you know, because you're in no man's land, and I don't know why things are so tough for Verizon right now, because it shouldn't be. But, boy, they're facing some competition, man, from T-Mobile and Sprint. Um, right. That's, you know, they're there and, and, and AT&T. I mean, I think they're behind the game right now, and, and I think it's showing up, man. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Tom, thanks for the call, man. Have a great weekend. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, sure. You too. Thank you. You too, man. <laughs> Folks, give us a call at 877-927-6648. It's a great question, man. You know, and it doesn't mean that you can't go, that it wouldn't be profitable because you look at a company like this, right? And what are we getting for dividends right now? Let's pull it up. What are you getting? You're getting 65 cents every quarter. So what is that? You're getting $2. I mean, this is bonkers. You know, what is that? A 5% dividend? What are you getting? Six, $132.60. $2 what is that exactly? And this is where you got to be. You know, two dollars and sixty cents divided by thirty-seven thirty-five. You got about a seven percent dividend right now in Verizon. Well, the tough part is, folks, you can go out there and get a CD and earn over five percent right now. So I don't imagine that's going anywhere. But they have missed recently, man, uh, in pretty epic fashion. And you back it up to really where things started to unwind. You back it up to July of two thousand twenty-two. Huge miss, right? Market's trading lower as well. Yeah, but I'd be careful, man. We will see. Market. And that's kind of the other area for everything you're looking at here, folks, right? If you're comfortable very long term, yeah, you can enter anything if you're really looking for a very long term entry. But boy, I say it all the time. You don't have to be a master technician to see that we are bumping up against an area of resistance at about 4,200, okay? And the lower part of that range is 3,800 to 3,850. Yeah, so you're talking about 8, 9% below. And that would be easy in this market, man. That would just be going back to the lower part of the consolidation. And boy, we really rejected that 4,200. Now, here's the, excuse me, here's the outlier, though. The outlier is Apple, man. And Apple, I've been talking about it. Okay, I got a lot on this chart. But that trend line, it broke above. It came back and tested it. And what are we going to do today at Apple, man? We're going to bounce right away from that channel line. Maybe that's the test. And maybe that will drive this market higher, man. Because Apple can't deny strength in Apple at 170. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back after the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up by 36 points right now, trading at 4112. I got a chart of Apple up here on a five-minute basis. Pretty interesting. The bright blue chart, the bright blue line at the bottom of the chart. Look how it just bounces so nicely off there, man. And I'm giving bear cases everywhere, okay? But you got to stick with what it's showing you, folks. And Apple is just very resilient, to put it lightly. And you look at that trend line, you look at the way it bounces off that, and yeah, it got what? a dollar below it for a few instances Wednesday night after the bell, okay? But pretty remarkable that you have to go back a year and a half for that trend line, okay? And that is right from the high. That touches both areas in terms of the week. These are weeklies, March 28th of last year, the April bar as well. Got just above that area before we really sold off. And the next bar on this chart, okay, in 11 minutes when the market opens, is going to put this bar green right here. So you're gonna have two big green bars, right? We're at 165.79 as of yesterday. This is a weekly. The opening tick on that was 169.28 and we are now trading above 170. So you're gonna get quite a bounce off of that channel line, man. And uh, the market loves this number, pretty remarkable. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of the fundamental data. Let's talk jobs. Payrolls, 253,000. Now, we had a revision of the month earlier, bringing it down to like 80 or 90,000, right? What is the number? I'm sure they listed here potentially. But there was a revision the month earlier, which softens that number a bit. The two numbers that stick out at me, unemployment, 3.4%. Chairman Powell might have spit up his coffee a little bit when he saw that headline come over, right? Monthly wages, increasing a half a percent. That's month over month, not year over year. That is month over month wages in the last month still going up at an annualized rate of 6%. The estimate was for 0.3%, which would be annualized at 3.6%. Now, there's a lot of variance between 0.3 and 0.5 over a 30-day period, okay? That's why it's not 
probably not accurate to base everything on just multiplying that times 12 because there's a lot of variance that you have to smooth out there, but you get the point, okay? Jobless rate at 3.4%. We had 253,000 jobs. Now, check this out. This is from the journal article, just talking about the jobs. April's monthly payrolls increase slightly below the average monthly gain of 290,000 over the prior six months. Okay, so we had a revision for the March. We get the April number of 290, just below if you average the six months, consistent with the healthy labor market. Wage growth remains strong. Now, what's so interesting, right? These are the payroll changes going all the way back to 2021, okay? Hard to deny that, yeah, things have softened, especially from where we were. <laughs> I mean, I, you have to chuckle, okay? Adding 769,000, 660,000, 557, 781, 614, 569, 904,000 February of last year, right? Right before the hiking began, February 2022. Since then, yeah, the trend is lower, okay? But here's the kicker. The dotted line here is the pandemic average, which comes in at what? Looks to be about 100, pre-pandemic, excuse me. It is the pre-pandemic average, okay? About 180, about 190,000 jobs, okay? If you're over 200 to 250,000 jobs, the economy's growing. That's not what they need again, man, okay? So interesting stuff when you get over there. Now, let's jump to Apple. Apple shares rise was the headline after iPhone bounces back. Now, the services they missed here, which is interesting, okay? Overall revenue, $94.8 billion. Market was looking for 92.6. Sales did fall 2.5% in the period. The $90 billion stock repurchase is the same as last year. The market likes that, though. $90 billion coming back to shareholders, pretty much the same as a dividend. They raised the quarterly dividend as well, 4% to 24 cents a share. So you're getting, what, 96 cents a year for Apple, and it's trading at about $170. Not a substantial dividend overall. And yeah, shares are higher. They come in at a buck fifty to a share, which was a beat on earnings as well. So they generated $51.3 billion in sales from the iPhone. Market was looking for $49 billion, okay? 1.5 rise from a year. It's just amazing that they just keep growing that because you really don't need to buy a new phone. I mean, they're kind of, can you imagine the meetings they're having making sure that you always need a new phone? How do we figure out somebody needs a new phone in the next two, three, or four years maximum? And they figure it out, man. Part of the way they're doing it right now is memory, I feel like, okay? You have a, a phone, you're just using so much more on your phone when it comes to apps, app sizes, and et cetera, that the memory factor alone is a tough one for a lot of people on a phone. Yeah, here's, so check it out, right? Services grow 5.5%. Thank goodness they're just not making computers, man, right? Look at this. They'd be dropping 13% in iPads. iMacs, Max, I guess, 31% decline. Even wearables was down. The iPad revenue fell 13% to 6.7 billion. Mac revenue dropped 31% to 7.17 billion. Market was looking for 7.7 .7 billion in the Mac sector. Okay. Wearables fell 1% to 8.76 billion. That beat the estimates. Now, services, 20.91 billion. The market was looking for just over 21 billion. Services include the iCloud, Apple Music, the App Store, a TV in there as well. I know I pay for memory right now, and I think I'm up to $10 a month is what I pay because I have to back up my photos. I got almost 200 gigabytes of photos. So it's remarkable when you look at the number they're doing, and that is a consistent number, much more so than Max and what was the other division? iPads right? You're not going to see a 31% drop in services revenue, folks, because people are just tied into it. It's built into their life, which is why the market likes that, okay? But overall, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Those, you know, the market loves the buyback. They love everything. But boy, 
iPads and Macs are getting trounced. Services are barely up 5.5%. I say barely because, yeah, it's staggering numbers. But, folks, their services number, okay, is around $20 billion, and it's growing at 5.5%. Now, I'm going to jump to Amazon. They had their numbers last week, okay? But some of the numbers, and Amazon really took it on the chin for AWS, right? They have quarterly sales of $127.4 billion for Amazon, not comparable to Apple, though, okay, because they're selling a lot of retail, margins are thin, Apple's selling thin air most of the time, right, cloud services, whatever it is. The one part, and I was talking to my dad about this last night, so they get punished for AWS, right, they get punished for that AWS, it's where they make all their money, man. Around the same number for Apple services, right, $21.4 billion. Now, Apple makes $50 billion in phones. That's that's so not comparable. But I wanted to go back over Amazon because you get a feel for the Apple numbers, right? And then taking a look at these, I have Amazon folks for retirement, okay? I believe in the company in the long term. And you see some of these numbers. I'll give you the bull case, okay? AWS rose 16% to $21.4 billion, okay? Now, the part that I don't think got enough credit, and we're gonna I'm going to tease it here, and then we're going to come back, okay, is sales to sellers yeah and we'll talk about that and we'll talk about advertising as well those two combine almost 40 billion for amazon we'll come back for the open folks stay tuned building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people they think it's too volatile and risky most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right but you're not most people are you at TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P up by 37 points. So that's nine tenths percent in the positive you come into the opening bell basically at pre-market session highs right now nasdaq 100 you're up by 93.7 tenths percent in the positive the dow is up nine tenths percent up 300 points 33,500, and you got the russell up 1.76 percent banks catch a bid today regional banks catch a bid you have jp morgan up by about two percent right now Bank of America up 2.5 percent right now. Wells Fargo up 2 excuse me, 2.5 percent right now. Cities up 2.3. Yeah, PacWest up 38 percent. As I said, though, folks, percentages on small numbers, right, can be deceiving. Western Alliance up 28 percent right now. As this market catches a bid. Now, here's what I'll say on the S and P, man. I was looking at 41.16 in this chart. Okay, recently on days like today. I feel like this market is just going to blow right through that and maybe gone for 4150. Because, you know, if you're trading this, you could make an entry here potentially. You're right back to where we turned early Thursday morning. You're now what? 55 SP points off of the lows that we had. It seems like when I look at this and you got area strength like this and you're coming into an area that you are right at near the lows, but that low of Tuesday. It's nice to find areas it's trading into, right? 4109 is the low. We're already 10 points above that right now, as the market just loves this number, man, which is remarkable in how it all plays out. Dollar index, okay, it backs off a bit to 101.55 right now. You jump over to the 10 year. Yeah, that backs off a bit as well. 4120. Yeah, patience sometimes, folks. Patience, the greatest virtue in life sometimes, man. Um, Easier said than done, as we know. But yeah, I think I'm looking for 4150. We make it up there another 30 points, man. You make it up 75 points in the in the S and P on a Jobs Friday. We'll see what happens. But already we're four points above that 382. Make it five points as we are above that level right now in the S and P's, man. Watch out for this market up 1.1 percent. Nasdaq 100, the laggard up eight tenths percent. The Dow up 1.1 percent. Banks, regional banks, all catching a big bid. We jump over to Apple, digesting their numbers. There it is, 171.42. When I talked about it, let's see how it looks when we put it on there on a weekly. Yeah, look at that. As you come back, test that, let's put it on a daily and zoom in just on this action. I'm going to take this Fibonacci number. You're sitting right at the 786 of the of the move as well, which is interesting, but you just gapped away a bit from that area. Move that one. Move this one. And yeah, you talk about a, a test of the channel line and a bounce, man. You test that channel line, you get down to 164.31, and again, what was so interesting is you actually hit it, and it's not reflected on the daily, right? You hit it Wednesday evening is where the test actually began, and we're now well above that level with Apple up 3.7%. They've gained $6.16 for Apple, 16 billion shares, lots of sixes here. Uh, what is that? Ninety-six billion, yeah, hundred billion dollar market cap as Apple plows higher to one seventy-two twenty-two right now. Man, watch out for that stock. So I was talking about their numbers, right? Big time phone numbers for Apple. They're talking about phones in the Tigers Den, man. And getting back to the numbers I was talking about, just because it's important to understand it, man, because the staggering numbers. So Apple gets a lot of attention for their services, which are around twenty billion. Okay, Amazon gets a staggering level of attention to AWS revenue, okay? They crushed the margins in there, and the growth is dramatic. 16%, it's rising to 21.4 billion, but remember, this stock fell out of bed when on the conference call, they said that that number was coming in 500 basis points lower throughout the month of April. So that's an 11% growth rate for the month of April. Doesn't mean it's going to be 5% lower because maybe that 16% was already dropping in the month of March as the banking crisis was hit hitting. Banking crisis started about March 7th, okay? Now, that's where you get all the attention. But here's just one I wanted to bring up for Amazon. If you're looking for a bull case fundamentally, okay, AWS gets all the flack because it might be growing at 11% to $21.4 billion. Well, the earnings reflect an ongoing shift. This is the paragraph to focus on here, okay? The earnings reflect, I'm gonna blow it up a little bit. I lost it, there we go. An ongoing shift in Amazon's business model away from buying goods directly from manufacturers and selling themselves. It's in, an increasing share of revenue is coming from the more profitable business of providing services and advertising 
to independent merchants who rent space on Amazon's website and in its warehouses. I was talking to my dad about this yesterday. He's like, they figured it out, man. They're selling real estate. They pretty much are, right? Check out the numbers, though. They've been getting into advertising. Advertising rising more than 21% to $9.51 billion. And seller services jumping 18% to $29.8 billion in the quarter. You add those two up, they're almost at $40 billion, and they're growing at just under 20% probably. That's a much bigger deal than AWS on Amazon potentially, man. And I, I'm surprised that that doesn't get more attention because I'm sure they're crushing margins when you're selling advertising on your website. Just create another page, man. Sell some more advertising. Create another product. I will say that nowadays, my dad and I were also talking about that it feels like there's at least four different products that are sponsored at the top of anything you're searching for. And most of the time, I try and avoid those because I wanna see the natural search function and what it delivers to the top of the search. I don't wanna see the four that they're shoving in front of my face, but most times what you'll see is the one that is at the top that's sponsored is also the one that's probably the best choice for what you're looking for. Just further down, they've chosen to sponsor it so they're back at the top anyway, and that's how they remain at the top probably. Nonetheless, right, $40 billion in advertising and seller services, this is in the quarter, $40 billion, and that area is growing at about 20%. So AWS is doing $20 billion, and it looks like it's growing 11% in April. And these two sections sectors of their business are at almost $40 billion, and they're both growing near 20%. Crazy stuff, man, when you look at those numbers. So when you get back to Apple, you get to Amazon, um, yeah, I would keep that in mind, man. But guess what? The market, market loves it. $90 billion in buybacks as well. Apple now up 4.5%. <sighs> Watch out, folks. Let's see how some of the other equities are trading. Microsoft lagging a bit, up only 2 tenths percent right now. Google shares, barely flat. What's up with that? Let's see how some of the chip stocks are trading. NVIDIA is up 1.1% right now. AMD, quite the volatile week for AMD, down about 2% right now. Let's see how the banks are holding. Yeah, JP Morgan up 1.7%. Disney's up 1% right now. Uber down 1% right now as we jump around. All right, let's see what else we had pulled up here. So we talked about jobs. Yeah, this one's interesting on the streamer front. So do you remember this actor from Sons of Anarchy? That's how I remember it. Anybody watch Sons of Anarchy? That was a great show on what? Um, what's this channel? I should know. Nonetheless, he was an actor. I know him from there. But man, he's turned into a powerhouse. Taylor Sheridan. And what they talk about here is that he's written so many hits for Paramount that the level of control he has over everything is showing up on the balance sheet. And yeah, it's it's interesting just from a perspective of how one man, a whole network, relying on his shows and the biggest of them all, Yellowstone. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Paramount as well. Markets up dramatically higher on Jobs Friday. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, 
the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the market continuing to climb. So 50% retracement of the entire move lower this week from about 4,200 and change down to the lows we had yesterday, 4,062. 50% runs you at about 4,132. Interesting that that is the inflection point that we had on Wednesday. So 4,132. Beyond that, it's 4,149. And then, yeah, you can maybe look for the lows of Wednesday evening when we were coming into uh, 4180, maybe maybe you run it all the way back up. Not sure you get all the way back up there today, but this is quite a market, man, right now, to say the least, right? Dow, up 440 points, 1.3%. NASDAQ 100, up 9 tenths. S&P up one and a quarter, and the Russell up 2.2%. That is quite a number, man. All right, so we're looking at Paramount, and what this article talks about here is that he controls everything, man. They got uh, $3,000 from a wrangler named Barbara Stewart, going back to Paramount. And this it's just, It is interesting that I didn't even know about this at all, and you see some actors, right? And then they go into doing everything. He writes them, he produces them, he directs them, and he gets to call the shots. And he pays somebody $3,000 to basically raise the horses. The show pays for it. You got people raising cattle at $25 a pop. He's cranked out huge hits for Paramount, and I haven't even checked this one out. You know how sometimes you, you have shows and you have it on the back burner, eventually you're going to check it out? Yellowstone's probably one of those shows, man. I know it's been in the press a lot because, what, Costner's leaving. He's getting divorced as well, so he's got a lot going on in his life. Um, but, yeah, Paramount and 101 Studios, which is his company, acknowledge his shows can be costly. Episodes of Yellowstone and prequel 1923 – run at least $22 million each. Yeah, but guess what, man? The amount of times I see that show mentioned, you need defining shows like that to be a streamer, okay? You need them, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, and you look at the streaming me re metrics and you look at revenues and expenses, direct-to-consumer financials, look at the expenses, man, right? That's $2 billion is the number they're running at. In the second quarter of 2021 they were under a billion yeah huge numbers but guess what when yellowstone season five premiered uh in 1923 premiered they added 10 plus million subscribers so that's the game there now you take a look at paramount as this market just keeps climbing higher man russell up 2.23 percent <laughs> this company man so tough earnings on yesterday and yeah be careful man now the 102 run-up, that's the Bill Huang manipulation, okay? So that's not real. Get that out of your system. This thing was really probably at about 40 bucks. Still quite the drop-off on their numbers. Let's jump over to some of the other ones. Warner Brothers Discovery. If I was going to choose between either of them, 
fundamentally, I would be on the Warner Brothers Discovery train, folks, because HBO, man, there's nothing like HBO. And they, they got, I remember when I was a kid, folks, this is crazy, right? 35 years ago, even more. It's not 40 years ago, because that would make me three years old. Maybe six or seven, no, maybe eight, maybe 35 years ago. Yeah, maybe 35 years ago or so. 1988, 1987, I remember, man, that HBO was the coolest deal around. I would see that that beginning of that HBO that they'd air before every movie, and then there'd be some cool movie coming on, right, on HBO. It was its own deal. So think about 35 years of ingrained brand, and they've crushed it for that whole time. What they're going to do with their HBO Plus Max or whatever it is, uh, they're going to add, what is it, TLC and Discovery maybe, I think it's a very complimentary model of people in households that can enjoy those programs, my household included, so it's a bit anecdotal. Um, yeah, they got a million great things, man. It seems like there's always something on there that I can watch. They have a great special on George Carlin. I watched that a while back. I don't know if you, that's not, you're talking about the Carlin specials on HBO. They have a documentary on him that is worth watching, folks, if you check it out on Carlin. That's just awesome on there as well. What else they got? They got a bunch of stuff. They got Succession on there, which is an amazing show right now, let alone the Game of Thrones uh, that they dominated for a while, but Succession is a great one right now as well. Let's check out Disney as we look at some of the streamers. Disney shares. Yeah, we're just pushing these lower boundaries, man. Disney, you know, you get to 90 bucks, that's a nice area to buy, even where we are right now, man. Sitting at 98.77, Disney up 1.4% today. Let's see how those FANG stocks are trading because, yeah, this is an interesting market, man. Apple is carrying the NASDAQ 100 right now. Okay, so be careful there because Google's down three tenths percent right now. Microsoft is barely flat. Amazon is down one tenth percent right now. The video is in the positive. Let's see how Tesla's trading. There's a bid for you up 3.3 percent. But yeah, Apple up to 173. And as I said, man, that's that's a that's something to keep your eye on because that is quite a break away from that channel line right now with the S&P sitting up an even 50 points at 41.26 in this market. Okay, what else do we have pulled up here? Let's see. Yeah, this one's an interesting one from JP Morgan. And I'm sure you gold bugs are going to like to hear it. Sees investors moving to gold and tech amid recession risk. Well, tech's not getting a bid today and gold certainly is not getting a bid today, but nonetheless, long duration has limited downside in a mild recession. Shares of tech stocks have risen sharply in global equities. Come on, load for me here. I'm waiting for that one. Let's check in on gold. There we go. Gold tech shares have outperformed global equities. Okay, so what you have here, you have gold in the red, you have the NASDAQ 100 in the black, you back it up to really where the dynamic changed with the banking crisis coming into that level. And yeah, you're well above the percentages in terms of those numbers. NASDAQ's been a big beat. It's been Apple, right? And I wonder if this is like the last exhaustion though. And there's your bearish case, but pretty interesting. You get Apple up 4.4% right now and none of the other tech companies can get your bid. What do we got going on with yields? Yeah, pulling back a bit. So we, we have yields going higher. You know, from that jobs number, we were just at 116.05. Yesterday, we were at 117. And now you're at 115.21 in the 10-year right now. Market's not slowing down, though, that's for sure. And we check over the dollar index. Yeah, it's pulled back a bit from that initial spike to about 101.80. All right, we talked about Paramount. We talked about Amazon. Yeah, let's talk about Florida. So Peter Thiel, uh, Thiel, he's out there saying moving to Florida from Silicon Valley is too expensive. Interesting, right? Talks a little politics in here as well, but being from Florida, uh, Miami especially, man. But Tampa's right up there. St. Pete. If you buy a house in Miami today versus just three years ago, you're paying four times as much for a monthly mortgage payment. He's right, because you add in the interest rates, you add in some of the accelerations. The Miami region in particular, especially when you go on the high side of million-dollar homes, the number of million-dollar zip codes more than doubled from the end of 2019 through 2022, while parts of New York and California still rank near the top of the list of most expensive areas. Values in some neighborhoods have actually declined since 2019. Uh, yeah, those are big numbers, man. I'm sure they're not big numbers for this guy who can move to wherever he wants realistically, 
but they are big numbers. And I was just talking about, you know, I just rented one of my duplex units in Tampa, twenty one ninety five a month. And you think back to just two years ago, in March of 2021, I rented it for seventeen fifty. And if you go back to 2015, I rented it for thirteen ninety five. So you're going from under fourteen hundred to about twenty two hundred. That's an eight hundred dollar increase. What is that? Almost sixty percent increase over eight years for the price of rent. Stay tuned, folks. S and P's up fifty one points. TFNN Come back to the end of the show. Has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than twenty years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other. TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of tfnn.com you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We just made it up in the S&Ps to a price point of 41.2875. We turned back about six points right now, still up 1.15% right now in the S&P. The NASDAQ 100 inching towards 1%, just shy of that number right now, 13,171. The Dow up 1.2% and the Russell up 1.75%. All the markets giving up a few points from the highs, but nonetheless, strong opening for the last 24 minutes. Jumping back to those numbers on the jobs number, if you didn't catch, out the, catch the beginning of the program, I'd focus on these two numbers right here, man. 3.4% unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, 0.5%. The Fed is not done, man, okay? And yeah, maybe they get the data they need over the next couple of months to give them the ammunition to pause when they come into their June, what is it, 13th and 14th meetings. 
But boy, if you see average hourly earnings keeping at this rate, if you see non-farm payrolls at 250,000, we got another jobs number that we get before their June meeting, right? That's going to be a very, very important number, folks. Uh, the unemployment rate, the average hourly earnings for that number. If those numbers run hot, we get a 253 and we get a hot number again. Boy, man, talk about pressure on the chairman. And yeah, we get to experience it uh, with some volatility on top of it. And there's your headline that reiterates kind of what we're saying. Hot jobs report raises odds. Fed keeps rates higher for longer. Back it up to what the chairman said, folks, before the banking crisis. Okay. Do you remember? Back to the S&P as we wrap up this program. Okay. Let me find the day. There's the day. March 7th, the chairman Powell came before Congress and said, hey, higher for longer. Right. We were at 4,050. We're 75 points above that price level still. Strong earnings from the tech companies, man. Can't deny that. But nothing's changed on the inflation front. Yes, we have banks failing. But if you see these numbers persisting, okay, it's going to be a problem, folks. That's when he told you, higher for longer. Higher for longer is the theme. And the market's expecting like two cuts by the beginning of next year. Can't imagine that happening unless we get an event. And I don't think that event is coming. Yeah. Thanks so much for starting your Friday off with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We got a volatile market, but as Basil would say, the day is young, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday. Thanks so much.